Okay, so next we are going to talk about the difference of capacity, uh, capacitor geometry. So there are uh, four different kinds of capacitor geometry, parallel plates, uh, as you can see on the top left, uh, cylindrical capacitor, uh, as you can see on the bottom left, and uh, spherical capacitor on the top right, and isolated sphere on the top. How do we, f uh, how do we find that? We need the Gauss law uh, by so we can relate uh, the electrical field of E and the charge of Q. By that, we could find the uh, equation here on top. A here means the area of the uh, capacitor. Now, we need to reduce that so we can find the Q. How do we find that? Uh, because uh, as you can see here, the factor of elect the electrical field E and the, and, and the factor of A are parallel to each other, that's why. And assuming, we need to assume that the E is constant from the edge of the capacitor to the other edge of the capacitor, we can find that uh, the equation could be reduced to the following equation at the bottom here. How do we find that? So, the general uh, formula for finding potential difference are as the following on the left. And we need to reduce that. So how do we do that? Is because of how the factor of because of how capacitor or the parallel plates work, the, uh, the factor of E and the factor of BS are opposite to each other. That is why uh, the dot product of both means it's just minus E times DS. So we can see here if we dot if we use that dot product here on the you can see it on the right v equals to the integral of e ds from the negative charge to positive charge. So uh, since we've uh, stated before that the e would be constant, we could put e outside of the integral. So and just integral of of the ds uh, from zero to d. D here just means the distance between uh, each parallel plates. So we could find that V equals E times D. Now that we find this, we found both equations. Uh, we could just substitute uh, both the charge of Q and the, uh, the full, uh, potential difference of V to the third equation that we've uh, that I've mentioned before, Q equals C V. So we could find that C equals epsilon zero times A, the area of the uh, capacitor uh, the, of the plates over D, the distance between each plates. All right, now let me explain about capacitor and capacitance. So what is the capacitor used for? Capacitor is useful for stored charge. When you connect a capacitor to a battery, here's what happens. So, the plate on the capacitor that attached to the negative terminal of the battery accepts electron that the battery is producing. And the plate on the capacitor that attached to the positive terminal of the battery lose electrons to the battery, like illustrations here. So, once it's charged, the capacitor has the same voltage as the battery like 1.5 volts on the battery, it means 1.5 volts too on the capacitor. When a capacitor is charged, its plates have charge of equal magnitudes but with opposite sign, like plus Q and minus Q. However, we refer to the charge of the capacitor as being Q, the absolute value of this charge on the plates. Keep in mind that Q is not the net charge of the capacitor, which is zero. The charge Q and the potential difference V for a capacitor are proportional to each other, like equation here. The proportionality constant C is called the capacitance of the capacitor. Capacitance is the ability of an object to store electric charge. The capacitance of any capacitor can be either fixed or variable depending on their usage. From the equation, it may seem that C depends on charge and voltage, but actually it depends only on the geometry plates such as the shape and size of the capacitor. 
and also on the insulator used between the conducting plates. The unit of capacitance that follows from a layer equation is the column per volt. We call that farad with an F. As you will see, farad is a very large unit for practical task. Hence, submultiple of the farad, such as microfarad and picofarad, are more convenient units in practice. Let's get started. First of all, here I have taken this particular series circuit in which two capacitors are connected back to back. There is one voltage source that provides the voltage V and the capacitance of the first capacitor is C1 and so on with the second one, which is C2. The plate of the first capacitor is connected with the positive terminal of the source. Therefore, the plate will have the positive charge. And for the opposite, this plate will have a, ne a negative charge. Next, the charge is delivered by the source that is equal to key. Hence, this plate will have the, the positive key charge. And for the opposite, this plate will have a negative key charge. Moving forward to the second capacitor, this plate is connected with the negative terminal of the source and therefore it and therefore it will have the negative charge. Instead of those, this one plate will have the positive charge. And for the amount of, of charge delivered by the source for this leg is a positive key charge and this another leg is having a negative key charge. Hence, you can conclude that in this series combination circuit, both of capacitors are having the same charge. Let's calculate the equivalent capacitance. We want to gather these two capacitors into one, so we have to apply the Kirch of circuit law in this loop. Let's say the voltage that across with the first capacitor is P1 and the polarity will be plus negative. So on with the second capacitor, the voltage is P2 and the polarity is also plus negative. And then by applying a Kirch of circuit law, we have plus P minus P1 minus P2 equal to zero. And from here, we can see that P is equal to P1 plus P2. And also we know that Q is equal to C multiplied by V. From here, we can say that V is equal Q over C. Focusing on the first capacitor, voltage V1, capacitance C1, and the charge is Q. So we have V1, which is equal to Q over C1. And so on with the V2, which is uh, equal to Q over C2. And then for the initial intention, we are looking for the equivalence capacitor. So let's just substitute the previous equation about V1 and V2 into the equivalent V. So V is equal to V1 plus V2. V is equal to Q over C. V1 is equal to Q over C1 and V2 is equal to Q over C2. Then we have Q over C is equal to Q over C1 plus Q over C2. Because of both sides have a key value, we can just scratch out. And we have a new formula, which is 1 over C is equal to 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2. It's kind of the same with the equation for the parallel combination in resistors circuit. Okay, let's moving on to the second form of combination circuit, that is parallel one. By seeing the circuit view, let's say that this particular point of the circuit is connected to the ground, which means the value of potential here is equal to zero volt. Hence, the potential here is equal to zero, and this point is equal to zero too. And then, um, you can see that the potential difference across both of capacitor is P minus zero, which equal to P4. Hence, you can conclude that the potential difference that across the capacitors in parallel combination is same. Next, let's say that key is the charge provided by the voltage source. So the key one is the charge provided to the first capacitors. And for the second one is key two, which we can say that this is positive and this is negative. And it also uh, same with uh, the second capacitor, which is, which is positive in this plate and negative in this plate. And then um, it also happened on the second capacitor. We have plus key to charge, I had key, mean key to charge, which I have said before. And the total charge is equal to key one plus key two, as we know that key is equal to C V. So therefore, um, Q1 
is equal to C1 multiplied by V, and Q2 is equal to C2 uh, multiplied by V. And therefore, we can uh, substitute into the first equation, which is C, uh, Cv is equal to C1 uh, multiplied by V plus C2 multiplied by V. Cv is uh, V multiplied by C1 plus C2. And C is equal to C1 plus C2. Okay, so we can answer this question, point A. Uh, we have to know the formula of capacitance. Uh, we have to know the formula to find the capacitance in a parallel plate capacitor. The formula is C is equal to E0 times area per dimension. And then we have known that the value of E0 is 8.85 times by 10 to the power of min 12 F per M. And then times by uh, area, we input the value of area, one meter square per dimension, 10 to the power of min three meter. And then we can cross out this. And yeah, we get the final answer of uh, the value of capacitance is equal to 8.85 times by 10 to the power of min 9 farad. Okay, and then next, the point B. In point B, we have to find the value of charge in parallel plate capacitor. And we have now the formula to find the value of charge in a parallel plate capacitor is Q is equal to C times by volt. So we just input the value of C and the value of V. And from point A, we have, and uh, from point N, we get the value of capacitance. So we just uh, copy paste the value from point A to in this question. And then uh, the value of V we get from the data known times by three times by 10 to the power of 3 volt. So we get the final answer, uh, the value of charge in a parallel plate capacitor is 26.55 times 10 to the power of min 6 coulomb. That's it. Capacitor. So right here we have a set of circuits alongside its questions. So let's start answering these questions. So the question, uh, the question asks us to look for the equivalent capacitance as well as the electric charge of capacitor one. So starting from the first question, which is finding the equivalent capacitance, what we need to do first before determining the value of equivalent capacitance is to determine what kind of circuit that we're looking at in order to tailor it to the right formula. So the kind of circuit that we're looking at right here is a series circuit. And why is that? It's because each of the capacitors are directly connected to one another. They are being set side by side. So it means that this is a series circuit. So for a series circuit, how do we solve the equivalent capacitance? The answer is pretty simple. All we need to do is just to put on this formula which is one over the equivalent capacitance is equal to one over capacitance one plus one over capacitance two plus one over capacitance three. And now we're just gonna have to plug in all of the values and it will turn out to be one over five. 
But watch out because what the question is looking for is the equivalent capacitance, not one over the equivalent capacitance. So what we need to do now is to switch these values. So the equivalent capacitance is equal to 5 farads. Now what about point B, asking for electric charge of capacitor 1? Now what we need to do here is to recall again that the formula to seek for electric charge of a circuit is electric charge is equal to capacitance times voltage. So now let's just plug in all of the values as we've already found before that the value of the equivalent capacitance is equal to five. So five times the voltage, which is seven, is equal to 35 coulomb. All right, so now we've already found the electric charge of the whole circuit. But what about the electric charge of the capacitor one only? Then the answer is also 35 coulombs. And why is that? Because if we recall it back again uh, in the materials that we've already provided before, we've already told you that the electric charge of each of the capacitors in a series circuit are all equal to one another and also equal to the electric charge of the whole whole circuit. So that being said, the electric charge of the capacitor 1 is equal to 35 coulombs. That's it. All right, now moving on to the next question. Now what we're seeing here is another problem, but with a different circuit. So what kind of circuit is this? As we can see right here, the circuit is quite different from the circuit that we saw earlier. So in this particular circuit, what we can see is that each of the positive sides of the capacitors are directly connected to the positive side of the terminal. Just the same goes with negative side of each of the capacitors are also directly connected to the negative side of the terminal. This shows that this circuit has the characteristics of a parallel circuit, meaning that this circuit is a parallel circuit. And now, how do we solve the problems for this parallel circuit? For the question A, which is the equivalent capacitance, since both of their positive and negative sides are directly connected to the terminal, it means that when we're looking for the capacitance for a parallel circuit, then all we need to do is just to sum up all of the values of each of the capacitors. So the equivalent capacitance is equal to capacitance 1 plus capacitance 2, which is equal to 6 plus 3, or, or 3 plus 6, which is equal to 9 farads. Now, what about B, the electric charge of a capacitor 1? The electric charge for the capacitor 1, all we need to do is just to plug the values inside the formula of the electric charge itself, which is electric charge is equal to capacitance times voltage. What is the capacitance of... Um, the capacitor 1. It is equal to 3, right? What about the voltage of capacitor 1? It's also 8 because it is directly connected to the, the terminal. So we're just going to have to plug in the value 8 and this will return in 24 coulombs. And what about the electric charge of the capacitor 2? The same goes with the electric charge with the previous the previous procedure, all we need to do is just to plug in all of the value inside the formula. So right here, the capacitance is equal to 6 times 8 is equal to 48 coulombs. Yep, that's it.